from Krimo Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Heavy equipment manufacturer Case launched its newly redesigned backhoe loader, the V-Series, into the South African market earlier in October. The new models feature fuel-efficient engines, better controls and a redesigned cabin to improve maintenance and operator comfort. Case Construction South Africa MD Graham Fort speaks to Krimo Media's Dennis Slater about the new models. The 580V is our standard European spec uh, backhoe loader. Uh, as you can see, it's got the four-wheel drive. Uh, it's pretty much a standard backhoe loader as all other, other backhoe loaders in the market uh, come. Uh, there are a few small changes. We do have a lot of benefits to the machine. Uh, to, in the machine that we've, we've just upgraded now, the 580V, uh, we have a new design cab. Uh, one of the big features of the cab is it's got the flat glass. Uh, this makes it a lot more, a lot more cost effective for the customer. Um, obviously we know curved glass is an expensive option um, and the flat glass, flat glass makes it a lot, uh, a lot more cost effective for, for customers when they do break glasses on site, which, which is an occurrence that does happen often. We have two, um, two type of backhoe loaders that we bring in. Uh, we bring in a machine from uh, the, uh, the, the uh, European spec machine which uh, the 580V comes out of our, our plant in Italy. Uh, we also have the 570T and the 570ST. Uh, that comes out of our Pitampur plant in India. Um, the, the 580V is kind of seen as the more upgraded machine, um, being a European spec. Um, the bigger machine to the 580 is the uh, 695 SV. Uh, and that's obviously the, with the dual wheels, uh, uh, with a whole lot of extras, so that's quite a beefed up machine compared to the one behind us. The cab was 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 the big upgrade, um, not only with the windows but also the ergonomic uh, design of the controls uh, being improved. Uh, the other big benefit is the engine change. Uh, we've now gone with an FPT motor instead of the Arvico motor. Uh, this will give the client a lot better fuel efficiency um, and up to two liters an hour of fuel. And if you bring that back to an hourly rate uh, on a machine uh, and you look at how many hours a customer does in a month, uh, he can quite easily get anything from 7,000 to 10,000 uh, rand a month, extra savings just on the fuel alone. The backloader industry is quite diverse. Um, we have a lot of different clients throughout the industry. Our, our Probably our biggest um, uh, selling feature with the machine or, or the clients that we sell to uh, is the agricultural market. Uh, we piggyback uh, quite a lot on the, the case tractors, the agricultural side. So our agricultural farmers are very loyal to us. Um, so if they buy an, a case tractor, they, they, they like to stick to the case brand. So then we get the case back a loader with it. Um, and then plant hire, very popular. Although the plant hire market's quite a challenging market, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, you know, the, 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 the plant hirers out there are competing against price a lot. So we find the plant hires generally look at the 570, um, the India spec machine. Um, but we do have some, some uh, good uh, plant hires that, that stick to the 580. Um, yeah, as far as, uh, you know, we do see these machines in the mining, the quarrying, um, throughout all the various, some material handling. Uh, but generally plant hire, construction and agricultural markets. We are number one in South Africa. Um, you know, we boast that with every three machines sold in South Africa, one of those is a, a, a case or a New Holland machine. So we do very well with, um, with our, uh, our market shares on backhoe loaders. Today we're celebrating 180 years. Uh, case has been in South Africa since 1960 um, and the backhoe loader has been uh, with us through that time and always been a dominant uh, player in the market. Case is also supporting Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October with Pink Hats, an initiative to support women in the construction industry. We know the industry has been very much a male-dominated industry. Um, you know, we've this year made a, a conscious effort to focus on the ladies within construction. Uh, two months ago, we had our Ladies in Construction Day, uh, where we invited the ladies to our arena and, and spoiled them a bit and, um, and, and show off some machines. Um, and that was very successful for us. Um, and you know, so we we highlighting again uh, with this month being National Breast Cancer Month. We've highlighted that um, we have to, you know, we've we've got to take care of our ladies and our and our organisation and in the bigger organisation within the construction industry. 
So for us, celebrating National Breast Cancer Month uh, is an important feat uh, and just acknowledging it and understanding what the challenges are and where we can help, we certainly do help. Our, our ladies play such an important role uh, within our business and, um, and it's good to acknowledge them and the hard work that they do for us. Steel producer OcelorMittal South Africa launched its newly acquired OcelorMittal Rail and Structures Facility last month following the successful acquisition of the former Highfield Structural Mall a transaction which was effective from August. The acquisition of this facility is posited to provide Osla Metal South Africa with an African edge to producing heavy gauge mainline rail products to high quality standards and to facilitate extended opportunities to address the critical railway infrastructure programs in the region. Presiding over the launch, Trade, Industry and Competition Minister Ibrahim Patel lauded the opening of this facility and outlined how it came to fruition. Industrialization is the heart of building a strong economy. And this event today is a step forward in building South Africa's industrial base. With the opening of this facility that manufactures mainline rail, and what it does, it reminds us the last time that South Africa had the capacity to do main rail, uh, mainline rail was in the 1970s, the old ISCO, uh, that for many years we had only the capacity to do siding, that we, we have now recalibrated our ambition to get back into that market. And today you are here at Africa's only main line rail manufacturing facility. So I want to congratulate uh, the many stakeholders who have worked closely together to get us to this uh, milestone and the journey uh, to today's opening is a st uh, story of real effort uh, a lot of uh, sacrifice that many have made and eight over more that kind of digging deep inside ourselves as a country to do things differently the story started on a note of sadness in 2015, the closure of Highfeld Steel facility, when you recall Everest, went into business rescue, sent a shock wave through the local community. 2,000 jobs were lost, and the plan was to literally tear down the plant, extract all of the metal that could be extracted, and sell it off as scrap. But an unusual partnership then started, a partnership that was uh, led by Johan Berger. And over a number of years, Johan and his management team worked with Mohamed Vauda and uh, the EDD team, as well as the team from the DTI. And they navigated many, many challenges. They approached uh, AMSA to supply blooms from the Newcastle facility to produce structural steel and a, and a partnership formed. Uh, Kubis and his team reached out and over a number of years worked closely, initially producing the structural steel on contract year and then latterly deciding to take over the production themselves. They secured a competition obligation. It was a, a, a mine called the Mapox mine that produces vanadium. Patel also highlighted the benefits this facility would engender. I'm advised that it will convert 200 temporary jobs into permanent jobs. So people who were doing some work here are now able to get security of employment. And it will also uh, entail an additional 50 new jobs that are being created. These 250 jobs create an enormous ecosystem in this area. Each of those employees, whether they're managers or blue-collar workers, they get to buy food and clothing from local shops, they can to use local public transport, they get to pay rates and electricity. I hope they pay their electricity so that ESCOM can uh, get our uh, energy supplies sorted. And that creates a viable local economy. And so those 250 jobs is a big step forward in building the local economy here. 
I'm also told that the mainline rail facility is expected to produce more than half a billion rands worth of local product and that it's likely to displace close to a billion rands worth of product that we would otherwise have to import. Now count that with what is happening on the structural steel mill, that there already a billion rands worth of import replacement is taking place. You add these together and you see an enormous boost for localization, for production under South African hands, for production that employs young people from the local community that draws on the talent base of uh, Mpumalanga. He also acclaimed this facility would provide a competitive edge to the continent as it looks to boost its participation in the global steel market. Africa as a continent is a massive net importer of steel. Africans as a whole, all of us together from all the African countries, if you put us uh, in one group, we'll be 17% of the world's population but we produce just under 1% of the world's steel. And so that's an opportunity for us. I don't see that as a problem. I see it as a big opportunity that we can begin to climb the ladder of increasing steel production. And having Africa's first ever uh, in this period of um, uh, the African continental free trade area, this would be the first uh, mainline rail production facility to have opened, and it's the only one uh, on the African continent, uh, is a big indication of our goals and of our ambition. And I want to congratulate all of you on the launch of uh, this uh, important facility. I understand you'll be selling uh, these rail line to mining companies, you're already selling it to mining companies, and you'll also be exporting it to the rest of the African continent, uh, and uh, indeed as we modernize our rail system, uh, we hope also that we'd be able to come to the high fault facility and secure the rail lines uh, that can transport South Africa's goods and South Africa's people all over the country. Ursula Mittal South Africa, CEO Corvus Furster, also comments on the acquisition and the launch. We were, uh, with the assistance of, of many stakeholders, able to preserve the high fault structural mill uh, went into business rescue in 2015 um, and I think it does um, create a platform for future growth uh, and supply of rail. I think once one of the mill that become stable, reliable, customers get more comfortable with quality <coughs> and reliability, then obviously it can, becomes an easier decision to do additional investment uh, and development. Already in uh, September and October, we have seen reasonable increases in volumes. Uh, <coughs> we would like to increase the capacity utilization here further, but more on a consistent basis. And hopefully we will be able to demonstrate to our customers, both from a rail perspective, but also from a structural perspective, that we can deliver consistent and quality product. That's Kramer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.